This is my ninth video on real analysis proofs. It's also my seventh video on fundamental inequalities. In real and complex analysis, for that matter, there's no inequality that's more fundamental than the triangle inequality. Two videos ago, we looked at the triangle inequality on the real line, the one-dimensional triangle inequality, and it said that the absolute value of the sum, or difference, actually, of two numbers, a plus b or a minus b, I could put a plus or minus here if I like, is less than or equal to the sum of their absolute values, and you do definitely need a plus over on the right side here. That was the triangle inequality in one dimension where a and b are real numbers. It's not clear why it was called the triangle inequality. In this video, we see more clearly why it's called the triangle inequality. We're dealing with n-dimensional vectors. Rn means n-dimensional space. The space of points, vectors, uh, that can be represented mathematically as ordered n-tuples. This is an ordered n-tuple. If n were 2, it would be called an ordered pair. If n were 3, it would be called an ordered triple. The numbers themselves matter, and the order matters. If I switch around the order of the numbers, it would be a different vector, a different point in Rn. You could call the numbers themselves either coordinates or components. Again, mathematicians typically call them coordinates, and physicists typically call them components, but it's up to you. Um, I did talk a little bit about that terminology in the last video about something called the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality, which is going to be the main non-trivial fact that I'm going to use to prove the triangle inequality in higher dimensions here. Here's the form of the triangle inequality. You can compare it with the form of the triangle inequality in one dimension. Looks pretty much the same, except you've got bold-faced A and B, and you've got double absolute value signs. Well, actually, the bold-faced and the double absolute value signs are optional. As long as you know the context, you could know that A and B are vectors, and you wouldn't have to bold-face them. And you will see people sometimes use single absolute value signs instead of double ones when we are still dealing with vectors. Uh, but often you will see double absolute value, value signs to once again emphasize that we are dealing with vectors. This symbol represents something called the Euclidean norm, or length, of the vector. And it equals this expression right here, the square root of a1 squared plus a2 squared plus dot 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 through plus a n squared. If n is 2, uh, this is motivated by the Pythagorean theorem. Euclid and Pythagoras are, uh, you know, ancient Greeks from over a couple thousand years ago. They This corresponds to the ordinary way we think about the geometry of the plane, say. And if you know about vector addition, as when you think of vectors as being arrows, you can make sense of the name called the triangle inequality for this, for this inequality. Let's pretend this vector is A. Uh, if you don't know about how to think about vectors as arrows, these ordered n-tuples as represented by arrows. That's something you probably should look up before you come back to this video. I'm going to assume it here. Uh, when I add a and b, if, if b is some other vector with some other direction and some other length, and if you put the base of b at the tip of a, say b looks like this, then the sum of a and b turns out to be an arrow such that if you base it at the base of a, its tip is at the tip of b. This is a plus b here. And so what the triangle inequality says in this case, it's related to this triangle. It says the length of a plus b, the length of this side of this triangle, is less than or equal to the sum of the lengths of the other two sides. And that's pretty pretty obvious, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's equivalent to the fact that the shortest distance between two points is along the straight line between them, these two points here and here being the two points that we're talking about. So it's so obvious, seemingly, that you might wonder, well, is that a proof? And the answer is no, we want an arithmetic proof that uses properties of uh, arithmetic algebra, that kind of thing, and in particular properties of something called a dot product, which is what I'm going to write next. In this proof of the triangle inequality on n-dimensional Euclidean space, um, I'm not going to write it as a proof, I'm not going to write sentences, so maybe you might call this more of the idea of the proof. Proofs are always arguments, so you should, when you write out your proof, write things in sentences. You can put your equations and inequalities within your sentence structure, but they really should be written in sentences. I know that's kind of a pain sometimes, but that is what's best. Anyway, but I'm not going to do that for the sake of time. So what is the dot product of two vectors? Well, there are there's not just a single dot product, sometimes called an inner product between vectors, but there is sort of a standard dot product. 
that people are most familiar with. If you got two vectors a and b, which note I'm going to use little half arrows above these vectors to indicate that they are vectors, um, a is say this ordered n tuple, and b would be a corresponding order n, n tuple b1, b2 through bn. That a dot b, and you should say the word dot, don't say times, and you should put a dot there, don't uh, put a and b next to each other without a dot, equals the sum of the products of the corresponding components or coordinates of a and b. You can write this in summation notation like this. And this is related to the inequality that we saw in the last video, video number eight, inequality, fundamental inequalities six, on the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. That's going to be related to this expression that you see here. Um, you can prove various things about dot product. That, for example, the dot product is commutative. If I do b dot a instead, by the commutative property of real number multiplication, this thing would be the same as what I would get if I do b dot a. b1 times a1 plus b2 times a2, etc., plus bn times an is the same as what you see here. There's also a distributive property for dot products over vector addition. That's something we're actually going to use. Actually, we'll make use of the commutative property as well. What else will we make use of? We'll make use of the fact, the observation, that if you take the norm of a vector and square it to get rid of that square root, you would get this. The norm of a quantity squared would be its first component or coordinate squared plus its second squared plus dot 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 through the nth coordinate or component squared. And that is the same if you think about the dot product definition as a dotted with itself. That's a fundamental fact that we need to use here. This is a fact that's very easy to see, but I, I will tell you that I do find students typically forget it. This is not something to forget. You should always keep this in your memory bank. It turns out to be very useful in many situations, one of which is this situation of this proof. All right, so now we're on to thinking about the proof itself. Uh, again, I'm just going to write equations and inequalities. I will give sort of re brief reasons for these things that I write down, but it's not going to be written in sentences. This is the inequality I want to show. Let's consider the norm of a plus b. And well, it would equal something involving a square root. Maybe we'd prefer to get rid of the square root. Maybe we should think about what happens when we square this norm. According to this fact right here, this is a plus b dotted with itself. Okay, so there's where I've used this equality. Let's call this one and this two here. I've used by two here. Okay. Um, now, what should you, you do with this? I hope there's a, a bit of a temptation to foil this, to do first dot first plus outside dot outside, and do say dot, don't say times, plus inside dot inside plus last dot last. Is that something that can be done? It does turn out to be true. A dot A, first dot first, plus outside dot outside, A dot B, plus inside dot inside, B dot A, plus last dot last, B dot B. What is the reason why that is okay? It's really the distributive property of dot products over vector addition. If I wrote my vectors as x, y, and z say, it's the fact that x dot the sum y plus z, and by the way, vector addition is component-wise if that wasn't clear to you, if you didn't know that already, uh, a plus b really would be the vector whose first component or coordinate would be little a, uh, a1 plus b1, etc. The distributive property for vector uh, for dot products over vector addition is just what you would hope it would be. It's this. Again, do make sure to put the dots in there. That's essential to remember these things are dot products. So I made use of that. Is that hard to prove? No, it's not that hard to prove. Just use the definition of dot products and use the distributive property for a regular multiplication over regular addition of numbers. I'd encourage you to try that. Hmm, what should we do with this? Well, how about using two again? 
a dot a is the norm of a squared. Same with b dot b, it's the norm of b squared. And there's a commutative property, like I mentioned already, for dot products. a dot b is the same as b dot a. I can combine these two things and get 2 times a dot b. Again, b dot b is the norm of b squared. And how is this helpful? Hmm, we're trying to get the right-hand side, perhaps with an inequality, hopefully with an inequality, to be this thing. Hmm. Or, well, actually, since there's this thing squared, it should be this thing squared. And if you imagine squaring this thing, it almost looks like this, except in the middle here, the outside and inside terms uh, add to 2 times the length of A times the length of B. And that's not what I have here. I have 2 times A dot B. This is where the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality comes into play. Here I use 2. What was the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality? Oh, I would encourage you to look at the last video, video number 8. Um, in terms of vectors and dot products, I did mention in that video that the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality could be thought of as to say that the absolute value of a dot b, by the way, dot products are always numbers, that's definitely worth remembering as well, that's pretty clear looking at the equation. The absolute value of a dot b, running two vectors a and b, is less than or equal to the norm of A times the norm of B. That was the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality. Cauchy is spelled this way. Schwartz is called spelled this way. If you were German, you'd probably say, say Cauchy-Schwartz. There we go. And if this is true, I can also say it's true that I would get the same kind of inequality even if I get rid of these absolute value signs. Dot products can be negative. So the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality is going to come into play to say that this expression is less than or equal to this right here. That's the key step. That's the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Actually, you can prove Schwartz. Let's see, I'm spelling Schwartz wrong. There we go. S-C-H-W-A-R-Z is what I'm trying to spell there. Um, you can prove this actually without referring the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. You can use trigonometry, law of cosines, geometric definition dot product to see this. And if you've taken physics, you probably know about those things. Um, I'm trying to avoid trigonometry here because this is the foundations of a real analysis course and we haven't done any trig yet. So the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality is the way to go if you want to avoid trigonometry. But this thing is the same as the square of the sum of the norms of A and B. And the triangle inequality now fo follows by taking the square root of both sides and recalling that, well, or seeing that the norm of any vector, being the square root of a sum of squares, is a, a non-negative number, so I don't have to worry about the negative square root or something. Take square roots and you get the triangle inequality as we were hoping to get. Okay, so there's an arithmetic justification. If you are asked to, you should probably make sure you prove all the necessary properties of dot products here. And if you haven't, you prove the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Go back to my last video to see that. It all comes together um, to get to the triangle inequality, the most fundamental inequality in real analysis.